Welcome to a supercut for the Things You Missed series. Today, we'll be going through all parts of the Lanel outskirts. If this is your first supercut, let me quickly address why I'm doing this so you don't need to worry that I'm just regurgitating old content for the views. That is not at all what this channel is about. I just want to make the guides as clear and fun as possible for you. So I realized, why am I making you watch three or four videos for certain areas when I could bundle them all into one big video for your convenience and pleasure? Hence, the supercut. So if at any point throughout this video I talk about in the next part, for example, I've just left that in because without it, the video wouldn't sync up and you may have missed some vital footage. Now that you know that, please sit back, relax and enjoy. Welcome back to my series of videos covering the most important things you may have missed in Elden Ring. Today we'll be covering the western and southern parts of the outskirts of Langdale, the royal capital. If you're a returning viewer of the channel, I'd just like to say thank you so much for being here. And if you enjoy this one, let me know in the comments and by giving this video a like. And if it's your first time here, welcome, it's a pleasure to have you. If you want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel and I hope you enjoy. Now I'll meet you at the Altus Highway Junction site of Grace in the south of the Altus Plateau and we'll head into tip one. From here, we're going to head east all the way up this big structure here and make our way towards the map for the Royal Capital region. And you can watch me reacquaint myself with the game after two weeks off and get absolutely obliterated by the ballista here. With that initial fumble out the way, we'll just head up the stairs and clear out all of these soldiers. There's no items to grab, or at least nothing of note, so you don't have to do this. Once I've cleared the stairs, we'll then swing around the left hand side. You can either take care of or just run past the rune bear that I've just encountered here. And then when you get right to the end, you can hop over the wall here back onto the stairs and you'll be faced with two tree sentinels. As I mentioned a second ago, this is my first time back with the game in a couple of weeks because I went and got married. So my first attempt with the tree sentinels doesn't go quite to plan. Now that they've unalived me, we'll respawn and try that again. This time the fight goes much more swimmingly and you join me here already having defeated one of them just as I'm taking out the second. And once he gets his ass thoroughly whooped, you'll be rewarded with the Erd Tree Great Shield and a Hero's Rune 1. Now you can head through the main doors here and just a little bit further ahead you'll get two golden seeds, a sight of grace and you'll discover the map for the region. So now we can start to get into the real juicy tips for this video. From the site of Grace that you just activated, head pretty much directly south towards this camp. There's a couple of soldiers here, but they will be very swiftly crushed underneath the weight of a massive ulcerated tree spirit that has just spawned in from the abyss. This fight goes very well for me. I only got hit once. I'm like, damn, yes. I'm getting back into the swing of things. This is it. This is me back in action. Oh, just you wait. A few of the later fights in this video aren't going to go as well. Anyway, once he's dead, you'll be rewarded with another golden seed. And if you swing round to the other side of this caravan, you can loot the chest and grab yourself the giant crusher weapon. Now I'll meet you back at that site of Grace and we'll head to the northeast for the next part of this video. As you're heading northeast up these stairs, about halfway up a gargoyle will spawn in. You know I said a minute ago that not all of the fights will go quite as swimmingly as that one did. This guy, I used all 10 healing potions. I just, I just had a complete brain fart during this fight and made so many mistakes. Luckily, however, still got him on the first attempt, but he really gave me a run for my money a couple of times. And when I do finally manage to take him down, you'll be rewarded with the Gargoyle's Great Axe. Now you can head up to the top of these stairs and you can grab two more golden seeds and I'll meet you there for the next tip. Now that we're here, face southeast and head further up the stairs still. As you get about halfway up here, you'll see one of the scarabs that you have to take out with ranged attacks just on the ledge up here. So I'll get my bow out and one shot him and then we'll be rewarded with the Ash of War Golden Parry. Now you can take out a couple of the wandering nobles here and go and grab a Lost Ashes of War right at the back of the area if you wish. I must admit I have not once ever used a Lost Ashes of War in this game. So personally I don't think it's a particularly valuable item but it's there if you need it. Now head back down and carry on northeast and a little bit further up here, you'll see one of Gostok's brethren from Stormvale Castle, and you'll start hearing Margit's voice talking to you. This guy will transform into Margit and be prepared for a little mini boss fight here. He can be quite tough. He's not as tough as the initial Margit boss fight, because obviously by now we're a lot stronger, but don't underestimate him. He's still hard and he can be staggered, but God, it takes some pummeling to be able to stagger him. And then once you do manage to take him down, you'll get the Viridian Amber Medallion plus one. 
now you can head further north up the main path still. I'll take out these few wandering nobles on the way, just because I'm mean, and then hop up this ledge and you'll find yourself a sight of grace. So rest here and then we'll move on to the next tip. You can choose to speak to Melania whilst you're here if you want and she'll quote you some more lines from Queen Marika. Then you can leave this site of grace and head into the ruined camp here and grab yourself a golden rune 7. Now we're going to head to the north and just where I've put these two markers here are two bosses that you can only encounter at night. We're going to go to the one on the right first and we're going to find ourselves faced with a death bird. On the way, make sure you take out all the skeletons because this is a tough fight as it is. You don't want all the skeletons joining in as well. And then what I strongly advise before you actually engage the death bird is run around taking out all of these skeletal snails because this is a tough death bird as it is and these guys can make this fight nearly impossible. I really struggle with the start of this fight and have to use a lot of my healing items before I even engage the death bird because these skeletal snails are so annoying. I grabbed myself the winged crystal tier as well, which we'll have a look at once we finish the boss fight. So now they're all done, we can actually engage. So now they're all dead, we can all... <laughs> so now they're all dead, we can actually engage the death bird. And I'm not saying that now you've cleared out all the skeletal sna fucking snails. Snail is the hardest word in the English language to say. <laughs> and I'm not saying that now we've cleared out all the skeletal snails that this will be an easy fight. He's still a damn hard death bird, so good luck. And once you do take him out, you will get the twin bird kite shield, which is very unique in that just by wearing it, it basically gives you the red tear stone ring effect. So when you have low HP, you will do extra damage and also have extra defense. And now we'll also check out the winged crystal tear as well, which temporarily reduces your equip load when you use your mixed physic. Now we can head over to the west, go and find a merchant, and then try and deal with a bell-bearing hunter. So I'll meet you there. Once you get to the merchant, he's got a few things that I strongly advise buying. If you do use a lot of items in this game, you can grab yourself a perfume bottle. He also sells three rune arcs, which are absolutely invaluable. Loads of different arrows and bolts as well. A note, which will give you some advice about the depths of the royal capital. And also a couple of different cool armor sets. Also, maybe most importantly, and something that you guys have actually helped me learn throughout doing this series, he sells the sentry's torch. You don't need to meet the stat requirements for this to be effective. And just by wielding it, you'll be able to see and lock on to normally invisible enemies. This is absolutely crucial for certain enemies and bosses in the game. You can also even reveal players using the Concealing Veil Talisman. It won't reveal teardrop scarabs, and it won't usually reveal things such as invisible walls or floors. However, it does reveal all the illusionary walls in the Sage's Cave. So this is a really great torch that will help you out in some very specific circumstances throughout the rest of your playthrough. So make Make sure you do grab it and once you finish buying everything you want from the merchant rest up make sure it's still night time and then we'll try and deal with the bell bearing hunter this first attempt wasn't going particularly well for me because i ended up aggroing a load of skeletons and then the pissing doorbell went so i just thought you know what i'm just gonna stand here kill me i don't care i'll try again <laughs> so i'll pass the time until it's night time again rest up and go in for round two this guy is still an absolute bastard. He is one of the most challenging bosses in the game. If you're willing to be very patient, as a melee user, one tactic I found really helpful that may help you out, try and stay just far enough away from him that he uses his shield slam ability because he leaves himself exposed for quite a while after trying to slam into you. So when you see him start winding up to use it, back off so that you're just out of range, then you can get in quite a decent combo before running away again and avoiding his follow-up attacks. After a few attempts, good luck, hopefully you'll take him down and then you'll be rewarded with the Medicine Peddler's Bell Bearing. Now we've dealt with everything up here, we're going to head back down the south again for the next couple of tips. I'll meet you at the Outer Wall Phantom Tree site of Grace, and we're going to head pretty much directly east into the pools of water in the canyon over here. As we're running down, you'll briefly see a glimpse of the footsteps of an invisible scarab, and that's exactly what we're down here for. So I'm just going to make a note of his route and then wait in place and hopefully catch him on his next route around. As he gets close, I'm going to chuck down my lava pool and as he runs into it, boom, all dead. And then we're rewarded with the Ash of War Prayerful Strike. Now staying in this ravine, just run pretty much directly south from where you just took out the scarab. And in no time at all, you'll see the entrance to the sealed tunnel. Head in here, activate the summoning sign 
activate the Sight of Grace, and then we'll progress through together. I'm just quickly going to change my Wondrous Physic mix because I say I'm going to do it every single video and keep forgetting. So for the first time ever, I'm actually going to equip and try out the Ruptured Crystal tier, which is the one that makes it explode when you use it. And I'm going to be using this on the last boss in this dungeon, and it's so fun. I'm never not using this. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Alrighty, start progressing through the tunnel, taking out all of the crystal miners as you go and looting all the smithing stones. The only thing to note in this first room is a chest with the smithing stone miners bell bearing two and an illusionary wall just behind it. Once you've cleared everyone out and got all the loot, head through into the next area with the lift. You can hop down the platforms around the edges here and grab yourself a smithing stone five. Carefully keep dropping down the platforms until you get to the bottom. Grab a golden rune five from this corpse here and smack the hidden wall. And there's a few different routes we can take in this next area. I end up missing something very important, but then I'll die very shortly and we'll come back to it. So we'll jump down these branches and grab a gold pickled foul foot, deal with these vulgar militia men, and then you can jump up and over the tree branches here. And if you swing back around on yourself, you can get two old fangs from this corpse on the other side of the branches. Now be very careful of all these explodey statues as you're looting this area. And once you've grabbed all the stones and all the items, we'll smash through yet another illusionary wall and it's just here as I'm trying to very carefully jump down these branches that I plummet to my death. But it works out quite well because I missed a huge side area that I'm now going to revisit and show you. So now that I've respawned at the site of Grace, I'll blitz through this first area, take the lift down this time, and when we get to these tree branches where we picked up the gold pickled foul foot, jump off to the right hand side, take out a couple of vulgar militia men and you can grab a stone sword key here. And then once you've dealt with these enemies again, you can drop down into the room below. You'll see a statue here that needs smashing and an abductor virgin will show herself. So aggro her and lead her towards the statue so she can smash it up for you. Then once you've taken her out, you can get three smithing stone six and you can grab the other items on the ground here, including a rune arc. Once you've looted everything down here, start heading up the ladder and we can start progressing back through to the area where I plummeted to my death a minute ago. So once again, I'll jump over the tree branches blocking the way. I'll just sprint through this room with all the explodey statues and grab my souls, sorry, my runes. And now that we're here, very carefully hop down these platforms, grabbing the smithing stones and the items as you go. When you get to about the third tree branch down, if you're very careful and you run and jump, you can jump over to the rocks just out from the cliff here and grab yourself four lightning grease then when you get all the way to the bottom grab the golden rune nine and very quickly run away before all the statues explode that is all of the loot in this dungeon we can now head forwards and into the boss room and we'll be faced up against the onyx lord i found this guy really easy when my attacks actually managed to connect i was taking huge chunks of his health off and he was being staggered almost every single attack but damn he was rapid and he avoided so many of my attacks so i made this look way harder than it should have been and right near the end i'll use my physic the explosion triggers right after i connect with an attack and it very nearly kills him and he eats us both flying that <laughs> i had so much fun doing that that is definitely going to come back in future videos one more swing and he's dead and you'll be rewarded with the onyx lord's greatsword now you can head outside here and activate the Sight of Grace just down the road, and you've just granted yourself access to the Divine Tower of West Altus. You'll want to come back here once you've defeated the main boss of Volcano Manor, Lord Rikard. You currently can't access this tower. This is where you'll go to activate his Great Rune once he's dead. Now we'll head back to the Outer Wall Phantom Tree Sight of Grace, and we'll go all the way to the south for the last tip for this video. As we're heading south towards the last tip and beating up the walls and grabbing a few items on the way, I just want to quickly mention YouTube's new super thanks feature and say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart to the few people on this channel that have already blessed me with a super thanks. Now, this isn't a plug, it's just me wanting to say thank you and to explain to anyone who isn't aware of what this actually is, because I honestly had no clue. So a super thanks is a way to give a donation, great or small, to a channel that you enjoy and want to show your support and your thanks. 
thanks. And the fact that people have deemed this channel, my content, worthy of that, honestly blows me away. So genuinely, thank you so much. I also think it's a great middle ground instead of using channel memberships because there are so damn many subscription services nowadays that it can be really daunting and off-putting committing to yet another monthly subscription. So this way you can just provide a one-off donation instead. That being said, a huge shout out and a huge thank you to the people here who are members of this channel. Seriously, wow, you are so awesome. Thank you so much. All right, with that spiel out of the way, we are now at the Minor Erd Tree Church. As we're here, we can grab the Missionaries Cookbook 4, and then further along, you can get the Golden Order Seal, which, as you'd expect, boosts the effectiveness of Golden Order incantations. Now, we just want to light the Sight of Grace here, and you can also grab a load of Golden Centipedes around the bottom of the tree. And with that, we're done. We'll revisit the rest of the Lanedale outskirts in a later video, including the rest of the north and all of the eastern area. In today's episode of The Things You Missed in Elden Ring, we're going to be wrapping up the outskirts of Lanedale. So, picking up from where we left off last time, we're going to start heading to Towards this minor Erd tree. However, along the way, as we're following this eastern road and clearing up the few wandering nobles here, we're going to be faced with not one, not two, but three stone golems. Two of them have weak points on their ankles and are wielding bows, so they will go down without too much problem. And then the third one only has weak points on his arms and chest, which, because of the size of him, aren't very accessible. So he's going to be a bit more of a problem. And after a very long, tough, grueling fight with this boy, he'll finally go down and reward us with a couple of thousand runes and nothing else. Now, we didn't really need to kill them stone golems. They didn't reward us with many runes, and I believe they respawned but I just adore this game so much that I love every opportunity to challenge myself and fight yet another big bad enemy because the combat feels so fun and I just revel in the feeling of challenge that this game gives me. So now they're all dead, we'll head to the Minor Erd Tree, clear up all the enemies around here, including the Ogre, and once he's dead, you can then go and loot the Twiggy Cracked Tear and the Crimson... and the Crimson Crystal Tear. You should now have two halves of the Crimson Crystal tier which means if you apply both of them to the same mixed physic it will put you on full health and the twiggy cracked here will briefly stop rune loss on death so if you time it very well using your physic you basically now have a way to permanently safeguard your runes i was going to say your souls then which is amazing now that we've cleared up them few bits let's move on to the next area I'm just going to take a couple of seconds to open up the map and talk you through a couple of things I'm not going to be doing and why. So pretty much directly south from where I am right now to the left hand side of this lake here. If you haven't murdered him like I accidentally did, the boiled prawn guy will be here selling you more boiled prawns. Uh, Blackguard, I believe his name is. So you can go and talk to him, exhaust any dialogue that he's got and buy some items from him. And then just to the right of him, actually in the lake itself, is where the dung eater will invade you later on in the game. Now you won't have access to this invasion until you've progressed further through his quest line and you can't do that until you get to the subterranean shunning grounds underneath the royal capital and that will be coming up in a video in the next week or so. So I'll bring you back here and talk you through his quest line then. Now there's nothing else around this part of the outskirts. This is all just barren grasslands. So I'm going to set a marker right outside the capital here and we're going to head there right now. We can grab this smithing stone five on the way but there's nothing else of note i'm just going to activate this summoning sign here not that i'm going to use it and now we'll be faced with the draconic tree sentinel I firstly try to fight this guy on horseback and for the most part it's actually going really well but then when he's on about a quarter health maybe even less than that he does a wombo combo on me just knocks me to the floor and before I even have the chance to get up boom fucking one shot so I'm gonna res grab my souls and try again on foot I'm doing significantly more damage this time he is going down way quicker however I get greedy and he takes me down again with that stun slam wombo combo what a load of bullshit. Third attempt, I just lose focus and let him obliterate me with a fireball. But now, on the fourth attempt, I've got you now, you bastard. I'm coming for you, boy. And now that I've learned his moveset and I dodge that absolutely bullshit one-shot attack that he's got, we take him down, no problem at all. GG. And you'll be rewarded with the Dragon Great Claw and the Dragon Claw Shield. 
Now you can go along this bridge towards the royal capital and this will open up the entrance to the capital which I have already covered in another video. So now that you've got that sight of grace you can head through the doorways and if you didn't check it out already because you were waiting for us to get to it during the playthrough now is the time to head on over and check out the Landell Royal Capital Things You Missed video. And then once you've done that I'll meet you back here again for the next tip. Alrighty, I'm just going to mark two spots on the map here, and this is a tomb and a grave that we're going to go and visit for the last two tips for the video. And then I see a spirit spring down here, and I try and be very clever. I'm thinking, oh, we need to get down there. And spirit springs allow you to jump up and down without taking any full damage. So let's, and I'm dead. Okay. I guess we're going to have to loop down and run down the mountain the old-fashioned way. There we go. Now we can hop down the spirit spring. And as we get down here, you'll see a couple of lesser room bears you can take out. No problem at all. And a statue that we need to break. So we're going to run further north, aggro the rune bear, bring him back to the statue and get him to smash that to smithereens for us. And then once you've dealt with the rune bear himself, we'll head back towards this statue. And we will be rewarded with two smithing stone sixes. Nice. Now head north and open the entrance to this cave and you'll be inside the Orisa side tomb. Orisa? Orisa? It's, it's got a Z. It's got a Z, but I feel like it's Orisa. Prepare yourself. And then we shall continue onward into the depths. Okie dokie. The gimmick for this tomb is that it is just riddled with teleporter chests. Through 50% luck, 20% skill, 15% concentrated power of 50% kind of knowing what I'm doing, I managed to take the correct portal pretty much every single time, first time. And it's a very easy dungeon to get lost in because there are three levels of the dungeon that all look identical. So it's super easy to forget where you are or teleport to the wrong place. So I'll do my best to take you through this slowly and show you exactly where you need to go for every step of this cave. First room, very straightforward. Take out the jars, just be careful because a few of them explode and then you can grab the glove wart in the room. Now you want to head down the stairs and take the chest in front of you. This will just teleport you below where you were. Now come down these stairs and swing round. You'll be ambushed by an imp and then you can grab a Grave Glove Wart 6. Take out the other imps in this room. Grab the Grave Glove Wart as you're heading down into the slightly flooded room. And then as you come into this next area, you'll be ambushed by another imp. And then there's another one further at the end of the room by this chest. Take them out and then jump in this chest. You'll now be teleported to the other section of the flooded room with two giant living jars in. Be super careful taking them both out. Then you can get the Perfumer's Cookbook 3 and two cracked pots from either side of the room. Now jump back in the chest that brought you here, and this time you want to turn right and smash through the illusionary wall here. As you come down into this room, you'll be ambushed by two exploding pots. Run away and let them explode themselves, and then we'll jump in the chest. This will bring you up onto a ledge that appears to be just above where you just were, but this is what I was talking about. We're now actually in a different area of the dungeon. It gets so confusing at this point. So now you can take out the imp, grab the golden rune seven, and then take out the other imp on the next balcony. Come into this room and be careful because there is an imp right over on the other side but then you'll be ambushed by another one behind you if you didn't take him out before now you can drop down and this is where you'll see we're actually in a different area now because you can run behind the stairs and as you'll know we already killed the imp that ambushed us behind the stairs and we grabbed the grave glove wart as well but there's another one there because we're actually in a different level of the tomb so take out that imp and grab the grave glove wart six now head up the stairs and go seemingly back towards the entrance to the dungeon, but there's a different room we've never seen before. There'll be an explodey jar on the right hand side ready to ambush you, so be careful taking him out. And then once you kill the giant living jar, you can get a ritual pot and some root resin. Now run back the way you came, all the way down both flights of stairs, and then when you get to the room with all the benches, take a left, run down these stairs, and jump in this chest here. Nope, nope, back up, that's not what I did. <laughs> Fuck me, this is confusing. I've done it and still keep getting lost. And then once you're back in the room with all the benches, run to the end of the room and jump in that chest. In here, there's a couple of explodey jars and you can also loot some cracked pots and some ghost glove wart six. Now you're probably thinking, well, we've already been in this room. There was two giant living jars. Again, this is what I mean. This is a different version on a different floor and there's a ladder. So we'll head up the ladder, grab the glove wart, and finally, we have now found the lever that opens the boss room. After pulling this lever, 
I was a dum dum and started running down the stairs. You don't want to do that. Ignore where I've just gone. I'm going to skip the footage forward a bit for you here. And when I get back to this lever, you'll see I actually go the correct way this time. So now we're back here. The lever's in front of us. Jump down and head up the stairs. You'll see a teleporter chest where the giant living jar was. Jump in here and it will teleport you back to the first level of the dungeon. You can now just keep running forwards and you'll be back at the start of the dungeon. And hey ho, there is the doors into the boss room. You'll be faced with a grave warden duelist and a load of living jars and once you take them all out you'll be rewarded with the sold jars of fortune ashes i love the pun and we're done congratulations god that is a confusing dungeon but believe it or not it's not the most confusing dungeon we're going to be visiting in this video so i'll join you in the final tip and we'll go through an even more confusing area and now, once you're back at the start of this tomb, head south and go to the other marker that I put on my map a while ago. Jump down the lift, or ideally just use the lift. If you jump down it, you may die. And at the bottom, you'll now be in the Orissa Hero's Grave. Light the grace, light the summoning pool, and then straight away, you can use a couple of stone sword keys to get in this room here. And watch me be murderized by some basilisks because I forgot to press triangle to get the bloody message off the screen so I wasn't able to swing my sword. <laughs> Fuck. So we'll go back in, deal with the basilisks, and grab the golden epitaph, which is a very cool sword. How awesome does that look? It's Ashes of War is really cool as well because it grants the sacred order incantation on you and your allies. And because it's a holy weapon, if you use it to kill skeletons, if you use it to kill skeletons, if you use it to kill skeletons, they stay dead. All right, we'll head on down and into the dungeon itself. Straight away, when you come into this room, sprint for your life down the slope and head either left or right into a little cubby hole because the chariot will spawn and start running at you. Then once it's gone past, you can run to the bottom, grab the fan daggers from this corpse here and jump off. There'll be a grave glove wart you can loot, but a load of basilisks will spawn so be careful taking them out. You'll have to clear out even more in the next room before you can then loot some ghost glove wart. Another one will ambush you from the right hand side just here where you can grab yet another grave glove wart. And now just here as you're coming out of this hole where you can see a grave violet in front of you, be very careful because two chariots are gonna be patrolling up and down and their hitbox is ass. So once one of them has gone past, you can scooch in the middle here and grab yourself a stone sword key and some more glove warts. And now slalom down the room in between the two of them. If you time their patrol paths well, you should be able to dodge them both. Once you get to the bottom, another one will spawn in front of you. But if you stand right where I am by the pillar here, you will be safe. And then you can really quickly grab a golden rune seven off of this corpse. And you can use this corpse as a marker. You now want to stand exactly where the corpse is and walk forwards. And you'll drop onto a wooden plank below. Be very careful as you're running down these planks. You can grab some holy grease and then keep going towards the north end of the room and come into this room here with a load of basilisks. A load of basilisks. Like eight basilisks. Eventually, once you've got rid of them all, you can get the vulgar militia ashes and yet another glove wart. Now you want to head up this ladder and you'll be on top of one of the chariots that we were facing earlier. If you time your movements very well, just watch what I'm doing here. You can dodge it and run past it to get straight to the boss room for this area. We have missed a whole chunk of this dungeon. We will come back and we're actually going to kill the chariots and they drop some awesome loot. But as we're here, I'm going to get the boss done now. One of the hardest bosses in the entire game because it's a Crucible Knight duo. So I'm going to summon my plus 10 Banished Knight Oleg to help me out. And I'm still going to have a hard bloody time in this fight. They are challenging. Really tough. So seriously good luck with this fight. And when you do manage to take out both the Crucible Knight and the Crucible Knight Ordovis, you will be granted with Ordovis's greatsword and the Crucible Axe armor set, which oh, looks so cool. Oh my God, look at it, it's so awesome. Alrighty, from here, wiggle your way back out around the chariot again and drop down by the corpse onto the platforms below. This time, take the south exit, head up this ladder here, and then when you come out into the room with this chariot, wait for him to go past you down the ramp and then very quickly sprint up and into the room on the right. At this point, you can smack the statue to move it up. There's now a few ways to tackle the rest of the dungeon. I did it really arse about face and ended up fucking it up 
like four or five times. So before you go anywhere, now that you've raised this pillar, what I advise doing is actually using the, is it, I believe it's called the Mimic Grace, the item that makes you lose all your souls, but teleport back to the last site of grace that you rested at. Obviously, you're going to begrudge doing this if you do have loads of souls on you, but it's the easiest way to get rid of all these chariots now because what you need to do is go back to the first area with the two chariots that were patrolling in tandem. And once you're there, you'll see that this pillar has spawned in a third chariot that will crash into them all and kill them all. That won't happen until you physically witness the event and you'll be rewarded with the Ash of War, Holy Ground and the Tree Sentinel armor set. And then once they're dead, we can now go through and finish exploring the dungeon at our leisure. Alternatively, there is an even easier way to do this. As soon as you've reached one of the safe spots in the wide ramp with the two chariots that I was just talking about, if you have either Margit's shash Shashel, if you have either Margit's Shackle or Moog's Shackle, the range of these items will pass through walls. Their range is massive and they will actually cause the pillar to be raised from your current location. So you can just use that. It will raise the pillar for you. You can stand there and watch the third chariot spawn in and obliterate them all. I don't think that's been patched out. I don't think it will be patched out. I think that is an intended use. I hope it's an intended use because it's very cool and it makes the rest of this dungeon trivial. So ignore everything I just talked about for the last few minutes if you've got Margit's shackle or moog's shackle you can just use them job done so the next thing you want to do from the room with the fire breathing pillar come back out and avoiding the chariot as you go down hiding in the cubby holes run all the way down the bottom to the south and if you go towards the right you can take a lift up at the top of this lift right at the other end of the hallway you can grab three great dragonfly heads and a grave glove wart six just around the corner, you'll find two skeletons you can take out. Once they're dead, go directly in front of you, directly east, and you'll come to an ogre that you can take out, and then you can loot the Crucible Feather Talisman. Now that you've done that, you can go ahead and clear the rest of the dungeon, and once you've got everything you need from here, run away and never, ever come back. Run away and never return. God, I hated this one so much. <laughs> That's it, we've now completely finished the outskirts of Lanedale, the Royal Capital. As mentioned previously, the video for Lanedale itself is already up, so go and watch it if you haven't already. Also, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you enjoy this content. Thank you so, so much for doing so. I hope you have an absolutely amazing day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.